Chapter One of the Great Big Treasury of Beatrix Potter. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jenny Lundack. The Great Big Treasury of Beatrix Potter by Beatrix Potter. Chapter One The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Once upon a time there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane. But don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the woods to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First he ate some lettuces and some green beans, and then he ate some radishes, and then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of the cucumber frame, who should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages, and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have gotten away altogether, if he had not, unfortunately, run into a gooseberry net, and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost, and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows, who flew to him in great excitement, and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop on the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. And he rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Couldn't you? Mr. McGregor was after him in no time, and he tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. 
an old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood peter asked her the way to the gate but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer she only shook her head at him peter began to cry then he tried to find his way straight across the garden but he became more and more puzzled presently he came to a pond where mr mcgregor filled his water cans a white cat sat staring at some goldfish she sat very very still but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her he has heard about cats from his cousin little benjamin bunny he went back toward the tool shed but suddenly quite close to him he heard the noise of a hoe scritch scratch scratch scritch peter scuttered underneath the bushes but presently as nothing happened he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over the first thing he saw was mr mcgregor hoeing onions his back was turned towards peter and beyond him was the gate peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes mr mcgregor caught sight of him at the corner but peter did not care he slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden mr mcgregor hung up the little jacket and shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree he was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand of the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes his mother was busy cooking she wondered what he had done with his clothes it was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that peter had lost in a fortnight i am sorry to say that peter was not very well during the evening his mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave a dose of it to peter one tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime but flopsy mopsy and cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper End of chapter one the tale of peter rabbit recording by jenny lundak south padre island texas recorded march 2009